Hey guys, it's Julie from Julie Designs. Today I'm doing a $5 thrift store challenge brought to you by Old World Home. It is a collaboration with other YouTubers who go to the store and find something for $5 and upcycle it. So this is going to be more of an inspiration type video because it's going to be hard for you to just go to the store and find these exact sale, exact items. It is meant to inspire you. So to think of things in a different way, or maybe you have something around the house that you can use to make one of these things. Uh, below, I'm gonna have the playlist of all the other videos of all the YouTube, um, the YouTubers that have decided to take on this challenge. Now, I don't have any Goodwills near me, so my item is going to be from an estate sale that I went to over the weekend. And I paid $4 for it. And then with the materials that I'm going to use, it's going to be right around $5. I am going to be upcycling this fold-out bench. Now, there's nothing on top of it. So my plan is to add a sweater material on top. That will make it the perfect little item to decorate for fall. All right guys, I'm in my outside kitchen and I am ready to work on the stool. Now I did purchase two of these, so I decided to just go ahead and do both of them at the same time. Now this one, I was getting all my stuff ready and I saw that it had an extra thing. So I was trying to figure out what that's for. And then I realized, it's a little chair. How cute is that? And it looks like there's some staples on the back. So they probably had like a piece of fabric right here. So I'm gonna recreate that. It's gonna be so cute. This one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a Christmas theme. I bought this Burberry print scarf at a garage sale for 50 cents. I love this print. I actually have a scarf just like this and I wear it a lot. I just feel like it's a classic pattern. So my plan is to use this and then use the little fringes on the side as well. And I think that's going to look great. And then for the other one, I decided to cut up this sweater I have. I love this waffle print. So that's gonna go on the top and I feel like this off white just looks great with this naturally aged wood that is already on the stool. Now, since I already have one already done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and just use this piece of fabric as the pattern to know what size to cut my other stuff. So I'm just going to pull it off. It's just simply stapled on there. It's super nasty. And if you don't have a cover to work with as a pattern, what you could do is just Turn it upside down and figure out what size you want it to open up to and just kind of mark that to cut it. But it's really forgiving as long as you don't cut it too short, you can always cut it smaller. So I suggest going a little bit longer and then you can just always cut off the extra after you staple it to the top. Now this one, what I want to do is, I love the aged look of this one. I'm not going to touch it. But this one, I feel like it would look good with a little bit of white in the wood to kind of go with the white that is in the scarf. So I'm going to use this Waverly White Wax. And it's an antiquing wax. So if you use the brown antiquing wax to make stuff look, look more aged. This kind of does the same thing, except instead of turning it brown, it turns it white. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to this piece and then it'll dry while we work on the next piece. You're just going to brush on the white wax like you would any other paint. And then you want to wipe it off. I just use a regular paper towel to wipe it off. It'll kind of give it like this whitewash effect, but it is different than a whitewash. A whitewash will change the whole piece, whereas this wax, it'll keep some of the wood white and then some of the original wood will still th show through. So I really like this effect. I'm using the original piece as a template and cutting out a piece of drop cloth. I'm gonna use this drop cloth as a base on both of my stools. It'll just keep everything nice and tight and the stool stable. 
I'm also going to use it as a template now to cut out the sweater. I need to pull out the old staples that are still in the stool. The good thing about just stapling it to the stool is that if I change my mind and decide I want to use a different fabric, all I have to do is pull it off and that drop cloth will still be underneath. I just need to pull off the top layer, the sweater or whatever fabric I use. I'm going to put a link to my staple gun down below. I've used many staple guns and this one is by far my favorite and the easiest one to use. I'm just checking to make sure it's opened up to the size I want it to be. And then you're going to trim off the excess. I decided that the drop cloth was a little too wide so I'm just cutting it down. Now I'm placing the sweater material on top and I'm going to also just staple it down. And then trim off the excess. I was thinking about folding over the edges of the sweater material and hot gluing it to the drop cloth, but I decided I really like the rough edge of the sweater and went with the look of the stool. I am on to the next stool. I repeated the same thing with the drop cloth on this one. Out of staples. So easy to put more staples in this gun. First, I'm going to cut off the fringe and I'm gonna use that later. Since it is a pattern, I'm checking it very carefully to make sure my pattern lines up. My stool was very loose, I noticed while I was trying to work with it. I actually ended up bringing it in the shop and putting some nails into the pieces that didn't need to move. putting staples in to hold it in place and then I'm going to fold in the edges and then staple the edge. It's just easier to do this after it's already on there. trimming off the excess. Now I'm going to add the fringe on. Just going to staple it to the bottom so that it hangs down. Now I'm going to figure out the top piece. I don't have a template for this, so I gotta kinda figure out how I want the pattern to look and how wide I want it to be. I was going to hot glue it together, but I'm scared to mess it up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tape it with some masking tape. That way, if once I put it on, it's not right, then I will go, I can take it off. You know, it's not stuck on there with hot glue. I love masking tape, it really holds up well. I use it a lot. I'm going to staple it on to the back and I decided to go a little bit lower than where the original one was because I wanted that bar at the top to show. I did not want to cover it up.
hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check the playlist below for all the other YouTubers who decide to take on this $5 challenge. Please like and subscribe to Julie's Designs and Signs for more DIY, inspiration, and home decor videos. Thanks for watching and give this video a big